The DaVinci Resolve 18 beta just dropped, and among some other really cool features, it introduced initial support for USD inside of Fusion. Now, keyword there is initial. While we don't have a ton of official communication on this yet, it doesn't feel like this feature is fully implemented into the program. Later in the video, I'll cover why I think that there is more to come and what features I would like to see. But first, what is USD? Well, it stands for Universal Scene Description. It's a framework that was developed by Pixar for interacting with their scenes in real time. Now, DaVinci has the ability to open one of those USD files so that we can interact with it inside of Fusion. This framework contains everything you need for the 3D scene. It has your geometry, materials, animation, and so on. But once we get that inside of Fusion, we can relight it and then render it using the store and render engine. And to accomplish all of this, Blackmagic Design has introduced 13 new nodes that can be found in the effects library under USD. So once we're inside of Fusion, how do we actually import these USD files? Well, we use the uLoader node, and it can import three different file types, the USDZ, USDC, and USDA. If we go up to the media pool, you can see I already have one of these files imported. And to add it in Fusion, all I have to do is drag it down into a Fusion composition. It adds in the uLoader node, which is referencing the file path over in the inspector. If I view this off on the left viewer, you can see it's going to load in this tin can object. It already has a default light in the scene. It's called the camera light, just so we can kind of preview what's going on. And you'll notice that this object already has all the textures and materials baked into the actual file. If we go to the effects library, we can open tools and come down to USD. So now we can find all of the different USD nodes that Fusion has to offer. Just like your traditional 3D system, we need to end it with a render node. So clicking on the loader node, let's do shift space and type in render. And it's automatically going to select the USD version of this node. When we hit enter, it's going to add that in. Let's connect this up into the media out and then view the media out in the second viewer. Now the framing is not quite right. So let's add in a camera so we can change where it's actually looking. To do this, click on the uLoader node and do shift space and type camera. Again, it's automatically going to select the USD version. When you hit enter, it's going to add in this uMerge node for us. And if we view this one off in the first viewer, we can now see the camera appearing in here. Let's click on the camera and then drag the position back so that way the can comes into frame. And an easy way to position cameras is going over to the transform in the inspector and checking use target. So now the camera is always going to be looking at this point in the middle. So that means if we bring the camera up, it's going to tilt it down so that it is still looking at the tin can. Now, like I mentioned, a really cool feature is that we can relight these scenes. So in the effects library, let's take a look at some of the lights that we have. I'm just going to use the sphere light for now, but there's a ton of different options. If I add this in and connect it into the merge node, you can see it's going to add this light down right here in the middle. But if I move it around, you can see it's not going to affect anything on either of the two views. And that's because we're still using the camera light, which is the default light in all the scenes. So to change that, come up to the top right here. And in this drop down menu, select scene lights and set a camera light. In the preview mode, we can see the reflection of this light uh, on the tin can here. But we still don't have that showing up in the final render. Let's go to the render node. And then over in the settings here, we have lighting. And we can set this one to be seen as well. And once we do that, you can see the light is reflecting off the tin can. And that's a really cool thing about this storm render engine, how fast it actually is. As soon as I move this light, it's already updating in the final render. Now this can still looks really dark. And that's because it is a very reflective material. So we need to have something for it to actually reflect in order for it to become more visible. Let's delete the sphere light and add in this dome light. Now this one's really cool because we have the ability to add in a texture. And by default, it's just going to use this beach scene uh, that's preloaded into the program. If you've worked in other 3D programs, this is essentially your environment light or environment texture. We can select a custom texture by coming to this browse menu and then finding an image and then importing it into the program. And these reflections update really fast. It's really cool to see how responsive they've been able to make this. And that's the case for the final render too. Another feature that we have is a transform node. After the camera, let's add in the U transform node. And this is a really cool feature if you want to get a camera to orbit around an object. Since the camera is off to the side, if we add in a transform node, it's going to set the pivot point to be in the middle here again. So that means if we change the Y rotation, it's just going to perfectly orbit around our object. And we can change all of these settings while keeping the tin can centered in the frame. And you can see this is really cool and a ton of fun to play around with. In the inspector, we also have the ability to add in our own shapes. So let's drag this node in and then connect it up into the merge node. Now if I move it off to the side, you can see we just have this capsule that's appearing. Let's go to the shape and then change it to be a cube. I'm going to bring the size up so that way it's a little bit easier to see and then give it a little bit more spacing in between the tin can. Now over in the material we can change how this actually appears, like adding a metallic look so that way it's reflecting. And if we bring the roughness down, it becomes a lot more clear uh, what, what you're actually looking at. And the cool thing too is we can easily change the shape while still keeping the same material. And just like before, we can change the camera and it's all updating in real time. 
If we right click in the viewer, we can get a bunch of different options for the USD rendering. Like if we come down to shading, we can change it to a points render. So now it's only going to render the actual points of the geometry in the scene. Or if we go there again, we can change it so it only does the wireframe. If we do flat shaded, it's going to show us the objects without any smoothing. So you can see all the individual subdivisions in these objects. In something like the shape, we can change this just using the base subdivisions to make it a little bit more high quality. If we right click again, we can change that back to smooth shaded so that way it all looks smooth. In the U render node, we also have a couple other features like changing the camera, the render type, even though we only have storm as an option for now, and enabling the sky dome. So that way we can see whatever image in the background. And if we move the camera, that's going to move the background here as well. So you can do some really cool stuff that way. Now this is where I start to get the feeling that this feature isn't fully implemented yet. One huge thing that this render engine is lacking is the ability to output shadows. If we actually want to use this to render objects to put in the scene, we need to be able to render shadows. But I have a strong feeling that this feature is going to be coming in a future update. And here's why. On the welcome screen for the DaVinci Resolve 18.5 beta, it announces initial support for USD. And initial implies that there is something else coming down the road. And in the What's New PDF, under the USD section, it mentions having an in-the-box shadow GPU renderer. And right now we can't do shadows, so they must be adding that later on. And the final reason, inside of Fusion, if we come in the preview, right-click, come down to Lighting, there's a shadows box, even though it's disabled, so we can't actually adjust it yet. And while this isn't actually proof that it's going to be coming, I have a strong feeling it's going to be in DaVinci Resolve before it's out of the 18.5 beta. And a couple other things I would really like to see is first off, depth of field. We have that in the traditional render system under accumulation effects, so it'd be really cool to see that in this new render system. It'd also be cool if we could have some sort of text node, like the text 3D, but have a USD version of that. And maybe even have the ability that we can import our own geometry, like an OBJ file or an FBI Mesh. I'm not sure if some of this stuff is possible, but if they find a way to do it, it's going to make the system way more powerful than it already is. If you'd like to learn some of the new stuff that Blackmagic Design has introduced, check out this video where I cover the multi-merge tool. It's a really cool new feature that adds a ton of possibility in Fusion. If you guys have any questions about this USD system, please let me know down in the comments below. But with all that being said, I'll see you guys next time for the next video.